I giggled a little bit this morning because uh, when I was a teenager, my brother said, if you've never got anything to say, just read Psalm 1. Now, I'm not reading Psalm 1 this morning because I've got nothing to say. Those of you who know me well would know better than that. But I do feel it's appropriate for what I am going to say. And so I want to read it to you. I noticed this morning that some of you did read, bring your Bible. So if you wanted to turn to it, uh, you could. Some of you have got it on your phones, etc. So we're in Psalm 1. Oh, the joy of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaf never withers and they prosper in all they do. It goes on to talk a little bit about the wicked as well, but I think it's really nice passage for us, just a beautiful poem of what it means to actually walk in that purity, in that holiness with the right kind of focus. And I think it's fitting today because 159 years ago, a small group of people decided to commence a Baptist witness right here in Rockhampton. Now, it wasn't the only Christian witness in the city. And I'm so thankful to God that we have a combined and unified approach to witness here. But it was significant for the Baptist movement. And it has proven very, very fruitful. The psalm says that whatever that godly person does prospers. And if we look back over the story of our church family and all of those years of witness, faithful witness over that time, we can see that what Psalm is saying is true. We've seen a number of various churches come and go and grow and shrink and all of that kind of stuff. And there can be a lot of reasons for that. But one of the things we have seen and observed is a steady increase in growth and influence in our city over that time. Each generation has been trusted to be responsible for keeping the witness into our community alive. And I think the journey that we've been on has seen that wonderful blessing that God has done. Rockhampton is a centre place for a lot of people that have gone out into ministry and onto the mission field. We know some of them. And it's a wonderful testimony to the work that God has done through those who have trusted him and been faithful through the time. Now you can read individuals' names through the history story of our church, but it's not what's remembered the most. What's remembered the most is the story of the, the church and its growth and its influence. You know, it doesn't really matter in a generation's time whether people remember our name, but the impact for the gospel that we have in our generation is not insignificant. In fact, I think that over the time of us seeking God and being serious about witnessing into our community, that I think that we have had over the last few years, a tremendous connection. And we're seeing fruit of what God is doing through that connection. And so we're in partnership with other churches around the city to be as effective as we can in letting people hear the gospel. We've also watched how God has provided from the very early days through the story of the church in the way in which it's graduated through various levels of buildings and expansion to what we have now, which is probably one of the largest properties and biggest buildings of any Baptist church in Queensland. Right here in Rockhampton, who'd have thought, eh? But I think, again, it's a testimony of what the psalm is saying. 
be like a tree planted by the rivers, whose fruit in season and leaf doesn't wither. Whatever he does prospers. And I think we can see that. And God has entrusted with us, he's entrusted to us this facility that we can enjoy and use for his glory. And people. A lot of people, when I go to conferences, they ask me, oh, what's Rockhampton like as a church? And one of the comments I make often is the thing I appreciate about Rockhampton Church is the depth of families here. The number of multi-generational families. Families that have raised their children, that have then raised their children, all have been faithful serving here. And that provides a tremendous security, that faithfulness and that stickability. We do see people come and go, as most regional cities will. But one of the special things about Rockhampton are the number of people that have grown up here and stayed faithful here and been committed here. And as a testament to that, we can see a number of those multi-generation families. Some of our families have four generations here in the church. And that's a wonderful thing to see and to be a part of. I love it how this church has got a name for loving its pastors. Now, I know not everything is about the pastor, but it does make it a lot easier when the family loves their dad, if I can use that affectionate term. And this church has been very faithful over the years, and it's led to, well, the last two pastors were very long-serving, and that often gives tremendous success to a church. And so there's a credit there. But the biggest credit, of course, goes to what God is doing in our life. And we want to spend a little bit of time this morning giving thanks to him for all of the blessings that he has given us. I've asked um, three of our senior leaders to come and we're just going to spend a little bit of time uh, in prayer. Each of us will offer uh, a prayer to God. And I'd just love for you to join in with us in, in your spirit and in your heart to do that. Well, family, would you just bow your heads, please? Gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, we take these moments to still our hearts and we look back upon the rich heritage, the blessing that this church has had. Particularly, Lord, we think of the pastors and their wives and families who've served sacrificially, day after day, week after week, year after year. The faithfulness, the prayer, Lord, the pastoral care, the ministry that has gone up from this place. And we render thanks to you, almighty God, for these lives, these faithful people who have served and given their all, given their hearts to the ministry and the mission of the gospel of Jesus Christ in Rockhampton City. And we thank you for these people. We thank you for them that have gone forth from here and served in other places. And Lord, have faithfully been able to minister the ministry there and now. Father, we look to the present and we thank you for the godly pastors that we have now. We thank you for their wives and families. And Lord, for the love that they show for us, the care, again, day after day, week after week, year after year. The faithfulness, Lord, that is there. Lord, the compassion and also the grace that they show us week after week. And we thank you for that blessing. Lord, we look forward and we think of those that will come, that you will either raise up here or, Lord, you will bring in from other places. And we even know now, Lord, that you have someone prepared for us that will come and, and Lord, to join this family, to join this ministry, that we may continue to build your church here in this place. So, Father, we seek your great blessing. We seek, Lord, your hand upon each and every one, Lord, that serve you in this pastoral care role, that they may know 
the presence, the power, and the love of Almighty God in their lives. And we render thanks for all of this in your precious name, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you too for the amazing facilities that we have here to enjoy today. Father, help us to remember that they are not ours. Uh, of course, Lord, they're yours and they're on loan from you. Father, you give and you take. Uh, we think of the history of the church where you have provided uh, through a number of buildings. And Lord, the amazing way that even you brought us to this building, to this property, um, it was something that came up very quickly, Father, because it was all part of your plan and your purpose that we should use this property to bring glory and honour to you. And Father, as we uh, look to the future, as we consider uh, further developments, Father, may we continue to recognise that this is your land, this is your property, to be used for your glory, to bless our community here in Rockhampton. May we continue to do that faithfully. May we continue to look after it well. May we be open to your leading, even if it means a, a, a change uh, at the last minute, according to your leading and guiding and provision. Father, we thank you for it. We thank you that we are able to bless our community here. May we continue to do that for many years until you return again. Amen. Oh Lord, we thank you for the many workers that came and serve and serve continually in your ministry here in this church, Lord. We thank you for the various ministry opportunities that you have opened, that you have paved the way. And Lord, all glory goes to you, our almighty God. For 150 years, you've called people in this place in this region, out of darkness and into the light, Lord. Well, glory goes to you, Lord. You have built our people. Lord, you, you gave us. Lord, you gave us prophets. You've given us evangelists, Lord. You've given us pastors and teachers. Lord, you've given us people to equip your church here, your people in this region. And Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for all the service that they have done and how you've equipped people. Lord, we thank you for the body of Christ that you have built up here. Lord, and up until we reach a full unity of faith, Lord, we thank you for the unity of the workers here in this city. Lord, how they've partnered uh, with other churches and congregations in this city. Lord, we thank you for the workers you've raised up. Raised up so that we can come into the full knowledge of you, Lord, the Son of God. And all glory goes to you. We thank you for the maturity that you've been building in your workers. The glory goes to you. Lord, we thank you that you have helped us as we are attaining the whole measure and fullness of Christ. The glory goes to you. Lord, we thank you for just the various ministry opportunities that you have opened in this place. Off the riverbank and declared your faithfulness. Lord, declared your grace and mercy upon those who gathered here in Rockhampton. And Lord, for the many years that it's um, been doing that in our city, for the various workers that you've built up and raised up, Lord, those that have been raised up and sent across central Queensland from this region, Lord, we thank you and we give you glory for that. Lord, we thank you for the various ministry opportunities that we even have right now. Lord, I think for the ministry opportunities we have to our children, Lord, to our young people here. Lord, to our older people. Lord, to various people. Lord, I thank you for the ministries that we have uh, within Glenmore School. And Lord, we just pray to you for that. We praise you and all glory goes to you for that. Lord, you're calling people out of darkness and into the light. And it's all your work. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, just pray for those here today that you would continue to build up them as ministry workers for the gospel. And you paved the way. Lord, help us to follow you and give glory to you as, that, uh, as we do that. And Lord, we ask that you would open the doors. And Lord, give us the spirit of boldness to step through them and take these opportunities. Lord, we pray into the next, uh, the next year and the many years to come that you would 
Uh, continue to bring people out of light, out of out of the darkness, and into the light, Lord. That you would continue to build your church into full unity, Lord. The unity of faith will build us up into the full measure and the fullness of God, so that we can declare your glorious grace to our region. And Father, today we thank you for the personal blessings, each one. For all the goodness in our lives, Lord, our employment, our families, our health, our wealth, we give to you the credit for those things. We recognise this morning that all good and perfect gifts come from the Lord. It is your way of giving us a foretaste of the glory that is waiting for us. You use the temporary things to indicate to us what's going to happen in the future. And we thank you for the glorious future that gives us hope. We thank you even when we are struggling, because we have you. Even in the darkest times, you are with us, and that brings a peace of mind through the challenge. And so everything, and in everything, we can give thanks to you, and we do so, Lord, through Jesus Christ. And now may the Lord be with you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and bring you peace. Amen.